Welcome back to Autism at Home, brought to you by us at Early Autism Project Malaysia through our non-profit initiative, The Hope Project. My name is Josephette Isaacs and it's so nice to see you again. This is our 16th series entitled A Daily Guide. And in our last lesson, we discussed school-going children on the autism spectrum who have transitioned to typical schools. Now for this lesson, we are going to talk about children with autism who may not have been able to fully close their developmental gap and still need to receive some sort of special education or homeschooling. This particular lesson can apply to primary or secondary school age children or even young adults at home. And here with me today is actually Tio Wayana, one of our scholarship families from years ago. Welcome to Autism at Home. Thank you, Joe. My name is Theo Anna and I have four children, two of whom have autism. A few years ago, we provided about three years of support for Theo Anna's two children, following which Theo Anna and her husband Sam continued the strategies at home. So this is very relevant for an Autism at Home series to actually feature Theo Anna and her family. You can also catch her on our previous webinars as well as our 2022 World Autism Campaign video and pledge a donation to support her and her family. So at this stage, we will be focusing more so on preteens, teenager and young adult priorities. Typically, there will be the main areas of managing challenging behaviours. This could include self-stimulatory behaviours, aggressive or self-injurious behaviours, and the solutions to this would be proactive and reactive strategies. One of the key proactive strategies would be bi-directional communication. This means very clear visuals to communicate daily and weekly expectations, as well as a way for your child to communicate to you, be it through a device or once again visuals like a PEX board or book. Independence. It is very, very important that a teenager moving into young adulthood is able to be independent to the best that they are able to. And this includes personal care, as well as some domestic care like chores, leisure or vocational skills, learning time, general knowledge, appropriate academic skills, and tolerance programs, for example, flexibility in puberty, and of course, coping skills and self-regulation, social skills, for example, peer play, as well as community trips. What the day could look like for this age group, maybe 7 a.m., there's the morning routine, 8 a.m., the morning block of learning, about three to four hours long, then about 12, maybe lunch, um, and about one, the afternoon block of learning, again, about three to four hours, and then around five to six, maybe outdoor time, go to a park um, or the playground or a swimming pool if that's available. Then there's the dinner routine about six or seven before the night routine and sleep. Because Ibriana has quite challenging behaviours, I have learned that I really need to communicate with her in a way that she understands. And that is really through visuals. Mm. And so every day, we so need to go over the daily sh visual schedule, weekly schedule. Yep. I try to communicate to Abriana in a way that she understands, but also to teach her to communicate with me in a way that she can. She does have some phrases and words, but if needed, using visuals to communicate also helps. Um, for example, I need a break card, mm. uh, relaxation boards, uh, even choice boards. So in the morning, a Brianna typically wakes up at a specific time and if I am early, she will say, Amma, go sleep, go sleep. She then makes her own coffee and we have breakfast together and then she helps to wash up. This would meet her independence targets and also some domestic chores as well. We then usually send her to a special education school. However, on school holidays or weekends, we still feel the structure is important for her to have tasks she can focus on. And so we usually have some learning time with myself and she does some leisure skills like drawing, which she loves. So for a young lady like Abriana, or be it pre-teens, young adults, uh, even primary school going kids, Despite the developmental delays, 
There is still the biological development that is still happening, which includes physical changes, hormonal changes, and just like any growing child or teenager, a desire to do things on their own, to be more independent. So we as parents and caregivers need to remember that and to try to set them up to be as successful as possible. We love how Tioana has really taken on board the communication strategies and structure as this really helps Adriana to understand what is coming up, which gives her not only predictability, but also something to look forward to, right? I also just wanted to emphasize that when it comes to the learning time, we do want to try to cover a few areas where it is appropriate, like general knowledge. It is important to keep our special education or homeschooling kiddos still up to date with what is happening in the world. This can be as simple as calendar events such as maybe Christmas, Mother's Day, Father's Day, birthdays and the list goes on. But also what about key world events that would be relevant to them such as maybe the Olympics or in recent years COVID-19 and the pandemic. We want to remember that although there is a developmental delay, every child still can learn perhaps more gradually, but we should still try to break it down, teach them and expose them. Then academic skills. Again, this needs to be tailored to be appropriate for your child. Like the calendar. This is important to go over with any child, even senior citizens um, who may be struggling with dementia need to be exposed to what day and date it is just for mental orientation. And even if your child may not seem to understand, it is still important to communicate it to them. Then reading. Again, this may be relevant or not, but it will be good to continue to expose your child to some appropriate books and even read to them if they're not able to read yet. Then written activities. This could range from writing, tracing, worksheets, and the list goes on. Arts and crafts. This too would be good to have as a daily homeschool activity. Some form of craft is appropriate to your child's ability to learn and interest. This could range from drawing, as Abriana loves, to colouring, cutting, pasting, even painting. So many of our children have become so passionate about art, and some have even gone on to becoming artists. Yeah. So, learning new concepts. You may still want to keep exposing and teaching new concepts, but again, if needed, in a much more broken down manner for your child to be successful. Then in the area of tolerance programs, Joanna, you mentioned that Abriana struggles with challenging behaviours when there's changes and many kids on the spectrum do struggle with this. We would definitely encourage parents to take one area that requires building tolerance or flexibility and to work on that area. You can refer to our series Unit 7 on building flexibility and Unit 15 on building tolerance for more specific information. But do remember to target one or two areas only at a time and remember to provide sufficient practice. Then coping skills and self-regulation as well as social skills through peer play and community trips. Thank you, Joe, for that clear structure. I will definitely try to put that structure back in and also the additional areas of priority that is part of Ibriana and Aaron's daily routine include independence and chores. Mm. We have also taught them some basic mealtime routines, which they help to set up as well as to clean up. We have also taught them to help us with the laundry. So putting clothes in the machine, hanging mm. them out, <clears throat> folding them, as well as their own independence, washing hands, brushing teeth, toileting, showers, changing, etc. So good. Wow, Tiwana, I really admire you and your husband Sam's determination and consistency because you are actually helping your children gain a sense of independence and autonomy, which essentially builds confidence and most of all, a sense of dignity. So well done. Uh, we would also like to add leisure skills. Now this is different to rewards, yeah? This is actually appropriate activities that your children love and are good at. Some suggestions include drawing, like what Tiwana just shared. 
Um, some kids could sit for hours and draw or paint. For some, it's maybe beading or making necklaces. For some, Legos and building. Essentially, a meaningful independent activity that could help occupy a child's time and encourage continued cognitive development. So not just sitting in a corner stimming or just watching TV for hours, that's not what we mean here. Yes, Joe, that is so true and needed and I sometimes forget and make the leisure skill a reward. <laughs> but what you are actually saying is so to ensure that there is sufficient daily time participating in meaningful activities that Ibriana enjoys. Um, physical exercise. My husband and I um, also find that the physical exercise and outdoor activities are so important and so we try to do this every single evening to take That's a awesome. walk, uh, a drive them all to the playground and um, Abriana goes on the swing and Aaron goes on the scooter. Um, in fact, one of my input um, times you always remind us as parents to put the oxygen mask on ourselves first. So we need to remember to take care of ourselves and I really, really love exercise and it has really helped to make me physically stronger, de-stressed and most of all, it's a some me time. That's so good, that's amazing and as usual, your family is so inspiring to all of us. Now lastly, some of the materials needed include visual schedules, as Joanna mentioned, for the daily schedule, but also weekly, and you can even do monthly schedules as well. Um, routine visuals for independence, for example, to show the shower routines or toileting, mealtime prep, chores, um, if it's necessary. Of course, visuals for communication. Then what about visual token boards for rewards? Um, then in the area of materials for the learning activities, we would recommend the first then board, maybe even relaxation board for self-regulation. Then of course, social stories, video models, and anything essentially required to teach new skills. We would really encourage parents to understand the benefit of these visuals and how they have really changed our lives. Um, we just make these on our own at home and I often just write them down or just quickly draw them out. Yeah. I have seen what a difference it makes in, in our children being able to understand and uh, what we mean. Sometimes even in the mall or when we are out, you know, I, I just, just draw something up on the spot so that they can understand. Wow, I get to do the pop quiz. Okay, very quickly. Is this true or false? If we use visuals to communicate to our children, they will become reliant on them and so we should just speak verbally instead. Absolutely false. We need to remember that we need to communicate to our children in a way that they understand that if visuals is the best way, why wouldn't we want to utilize them so our children can understand and be successful? Since my daughter is already a teenager, she should be grown up by now and not require rewards. By continuing to give her rewards, she is going to become pampered and reliant on them. Again, absolutely false. Every single one of us functions daily because of motivation. We go to work either because we get paid or because we are internally motivated to succeed or by the vision of our work. Every child has some sort of personal motivation. So by providing rewards, we are again meeting our child where they are at and helping to motivate them to learn new things and to regulate their behaviors. Rewards are also part of a proactive and preventative strategy that we strongly recommend. Wow, that is just so good, Tiana. So amazing and so inspiring. Well, it's your turn. How about you start with identifying key priorities for your child? Write up your child's daily or weekly schedule and plan to fit in the incidental teaching throughout the day, but also those structured lessons at least one or two times a day. Then plan your structured lessons based on some of the demonstrations today. Well, Tioanna, thank you so, so much for being a part of today's video and for being so generous to share your family's life to the rest of the world. 
Now again, if you would like to follow a bit more of this family's journey, do check out our previous live webinars with them as well as this year's World Autism Campaign video. Also, you can play a part in supporting this amazing family by making a donation to the QR code with the reference AA Family. So that's it for our entire series on a daily guide for autism at home. We hope that you have found these lessons helpful and easy to follow. Also with that, thank you so much for your support. And with the amount of interest we have received online, we have actually started providing online services and currently work with clients in other states of Malaysia, New Zealand, Philippines, Singapore, and even Switzerland. So do scan the QR code and get in touch with us for more information. Autism at Home is brought to you by The Hope Project, which is the non-profit arm of Early Autism Project Malaysia. All the content development, clinical expertise and time is completely borne by EAP Malaysia and the production of these videos so far are funded solely through donations and fundraising. If you found these resources helpful and would like to contribute in some way, please do pledge a donation at autismmalaysia.com slash the hope project. Take care and we will see you soon. Bye!